So today I had an idea. I'll probably surprise no one by saying that I like engineering, uh, building all kinds of things, but I also like movies and cinema magic and, you know, video production. <laughs> Simply put, I think I have an idea for a device, let's say, that would allow me to levitate on camera. I kind of imagine this device being a lift or a crane that I could remove in post-production in video, kind of like green screen magic in Hollywood, you know? Elaborate flying or floating rigs are usually used in huge expensive movies, but I think they're just so cool that even a homemade janky budget version would be fun to experiment with. And speaking of budget, I'll be using these as my foundation. These are motorized desk legs that someone was giving away for free, so you can't beat that price point. And on paper, they should be able to lift my body weight. I'm gonna go with a floor standing design because cables require a ceiling to attach to, as well as a large crew to operate. This way I will be able to use it by myself, and even outdoors. I want it as robust as possible, so I'm using thick pieces of steel for this project. I'm 6 foot 3 and around 200 pounds, so there's gonna be a lot of weird leverages and forces at play. So this is how it turned out. So I think since most of the weight is gonna be here, I need some sort of like a tripod situation uh, to stabilize me. To attach myself to the rig, I'll be using one of these. It's a climbing harness that I bought online. Uh, I also bought a beefier one too, so hopefully they'll handle my weight. Let's see what happens. Hey Siri, call the ambulance in like five minutes if you don't hear from me. Okay, I'm being pulled. I'm airborne. <laughs> uh, I'm way off balance though. <laughs> Whoa! Whew. As you saw, I was kind of tilting forward, but that's because these straps on the back were slipping and giving way because they're adjustable. They're not supposed to be load bearing. Even though the harness mounting and everything wasn't a complete success, I'm still super stoked that it handled my weight. So that means that we can continue on and develop something really robust. I folded over and triple stitched every strap. You can't really see this in the video, but during another test I realized that the legs are a bit too springy, so I needed to reinforce them. In pursuit of stability, I extended these legs a little bit and then added some supports here, but it seems that the main issue is the springiness of the bolts that tighten everything together. So I'm reinforcing it with a steel base. Now as for the harness, I'm gonna attach it to the rig with two points of contact for stability's sake. Basically I'm making this horseshoe shaped type of thing to suspend me by the hips. That should prevent me from rocking side to side and tilting forward. Oh, it's tight! <laughs> ah, I hit myself in the chest. <laughs> Perfect. Now everything was going fine, but then disaster struck this humble workshop of mine. For some reason during testing one of the motors snapped. I suspect that he drifted out of sync and just pulled themselves apart. I spent a couple of days trying to repair it, but in the end I needed to replace them both. These ones stand a bit taller, so I needed to shorten the boom a little bit. Also, they're about 15 cm shorter when they're fully extended, which kinda sucks, but they're way, way more powerful. So actually, maybe it's a good thing. I also did some touch-ups here and there and got it ready for painting. So let's do that. 
I was really lucky to find another set of desk legs for free because the project would have ended then and there. The mounting holes for the bolts were identical so the swapping was hassle free. So why am I painting this rig green? Well, while the paint is drying, let me explain. See, green screens are used in movies to help computers isolate objects and footage. After cutting out everything that's this fluorescent green, you can replace it with anything in post-production. That's how artists blend real actors with computer-generated objects and backgrounds. Key word here for us is objects. This technique is not only for backgrounds. This process is called keying. You shoot some footage with something green and replace it in software. And you can add in pictures, animations, videos, but what I'm gonna do is superimpose it over a video of the scene shot before, effectively making the object invisible. Well, at least that's the plan. I assembled everything back in the workshop, but the paint was chipping, so I had a kind of bad feeling about it. Um, and here's what happened during the first test. Ouch. So that was a few days wasted. But luckily I had a backup plan. In the end, fabric ended up being the superior solution anyway, because fabric is matte and paint will reflect light sometimes in weird ways. All right, so now everything is pretty much done. Uh, time to take some test footage and see if I can remove it in post-production. Let's start with some footage of me being lifted. Now in post-production, we can isolate those vibrant green tones from the shot and cut them out from the scene. The computer detects and isolates those vibrant green tones and subtracts them from the footage, leaving a hole. It doesn't just change the color. So now, let's take some footage of my workshop without a crane and put it beneath the video of me. Honestly, it's not that bad, but we could touch it up a little bit. After some adjustments, it's much better, but still, it's not ideal. Um, there's some weirdness around my feet. I think the issue is that the crane casts a shadow underneath its leg and the computer doesn't know what to do with it, so I think I need to have some fabric covering the gap between the leg and the floor. For a photo shoot, it wouldn't be relevant anyway, because, you know, it's just a single frame, so you can just photoshop it out. So all in all, it actually looks uh, pretty promising. Before I set up everything for the final composition, I just wanted to make sure that the thigh armors can go over the harness because um, I didn't really try it before, so uh, I did that and it seemed to work out fine. So after the dress rehearsal, I dragged everything outside and got into the costume. I waited until a few minutes after the sunset for the perfect lighting, but that meant that there was only about 20-30 minutes where I could get some usable footage. In hindsight, I should have positioned the main camera a bit better because the wings wash out against the bright sky, so I'm kind of annoyed about that. But to be fair, there was just too many things to keep track of anyway. So there you have it. After all this work, finally, we have some floaty cosplay shots. Now I know it's me on the screen and uh, it's my project, but I still think it looks really cool. Though I do see a couple of things wrong. Uh, my posing is really stiff and it just kind of gives off this fake feeling, as well as the angle of the camera. I think the straight on angle is just not that good. I think if I had the camera a little bit off the side, the space beneath me would have been much more pronounced and more realistic looking. There's still some weirdness around my feet, but that's because green grass is like the worst thing to work with when you're trying to remove something green from the shot, but yeah. It's something that I'll have to keep in mind for the future and uh, either film only indoors or on some concrete or something for the perfect results. So, a few final thoughts. Even with all the setbacks and the delays and stuff breaking and not working out, um, I hope you had fun on this journey that we took on together. So what's next? Well, first of all, I need to polish my posing a little bit to really sell the idea that I'm floating on camera, you know? Maybe using a fog machine would help, you know, to really create space between my feet and the ground to really show the gap. Secondly, I really need to make a battery pack for it because my backyard isn't that cinematic and I would like to bring the crane to locations where there isn't a power outlet for me to use. Honestly though, uh, this project pushed me pretty hard. I think I'm a little bit at a creative crossroads right now, you know, with the educational content that I put out, and then this experimental stuff, and then there's the cosplay part of it. Um, I kind of feel like I'm still trying to find my voice a little bit, and um, I hope it's not too all over the place for you guys to follow along and, you know, care. But yeah, now I can't wait to float again and take some better footage, hopefully, and uh, use all the things that I learned so far. 
If you have some thoughts or some suggestions about this project or some tips or ideas for my channel in general, uh, leave them down below and I would really appreciate them. That being said, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you next time. Mm. <laughs>